Alright, so now that we have learned the basics of complex numbers, we can finally get started on the topic of complex functions or functions of a complex variable. So the way that we're going to define the function of a complex variable set is first by defining the complex variable set itself. So with a complex number, we know that we have a real part and an imaginary part, and we usually write it like this, where a and b are both real numbers. With a complex variable, we're going to have two variables. So we're going to have x and y, and x and y are going to be real variables, so they're going to take on any numbers that are real. And then i is just going to be the imaginary unit. So you can imagine that all the inputs of this function are actually going to be complex numbers. Now, that means that we can allow y to be 0, in which case the input would be a real number. But we would also have to input that into the function itself. So, by definition, we need to take into account both variables and the way we define a function of a complex variable is by two functions each of those functions is going to be a function of x and y and basically once we put the values of x and y and then we need to put those values into each of these functions and then evaluate it and you can imagine that obviously you take the function f of z is going to take a complex number and it's going to output another complex number so this might be a plus ib and then the output is going to be c plus id so this is just a transformation it's just like a regular function takes a real value transforms it into another real value with the complex numbers it happens the same you have a function of a complex number it inputs a complex number and then it outputs another complex number and that's essentially the way it works and just to show you an example let's have the complex number um, let's have xy plus i y squared now let's say we're interested in finding the value of the function for the number 1 plus 3i then what we would do is we would put a 1 where x is and then a 3 where y is and then we're going to get 3 squared like this so that turns out to be 3, 3 plus i9 so that's going to be the output and that's very straightforward I think uh, the only tricky thing is that you might see oh well that, that seems a little bit complicated because now that we have these two functions then how do we differentiate this function and that's a very good question but the really nice thing about this is that if you express your function set in terms of set itself so let's have some expression set to the power of n then that means that your derivative with respect, with respect to uh, the complex variable set is just going to be your regular derivative so you just treat set as any other variable as long as the function is expressed in terms of set explicitly so for example if you have the function e to the power of z then you know that the derivative of that is going to be equal to e to the power of z same as you had 2 to the power z squared that's going to be 2 z oh actually it should be 4 so 4 z times e to the power 2 z squared and that's pretty straightforward as long as the function is represented with in terms of the complex variable itself instead of x and y then we can perform the differentiation as normal and it, the same applies to all other types of functions uh, but we won't be concerned too much with differentiation we, we will see that there are the main applications of complex analysis which is the main topic of this video series is integration so we will learn how to use this when it comes to integrating functions of a complex variable on the complex plane and how can we how we can use that to basically derive very important results and one of those results is going to be to um, apply to invert the Laplace transform which is really really useful in engineering and physics and also other branches of science as well so that's one of the main applications that we will be looking at now there's a there's a definition that we must establish for a function of f of z and it is that so I'm just gonna have an asterisk here f of z is analytic and uh, Analytic if it is continuous within some region on the complex plane, and we we'll, let's call that region D. 
So if it is continuous with that, that region D, it, it is analytic. And the, the reason we want it to be analytic is that analytic functions can be integrated. Non-analytic ones um, tend to go to zero, and that is something that we will explore in later videos when we actually get to integrating functions like this. But for now, what this means in more practical terms is that f of z is analytic if it satisfies the following equations, which are called Cauchy-Riemann equations. And you will see the name Cauchy happen, um, come up quite a lot in complex analysis because he was one of the, of the pioneers of the whole theory behind uh, complex analysis. So you will see his name in a lot of theorems and a lot of formulas. So uh, he was actually a really, really smart guy who came up with all this theory. So it's really crazy, but it all seems to be quite useful for a lot of applications of this area. So the cauchy riemann equations are a set of derivatives. So it tells us that the partial derivative of u with respect to x has to be equal to the partial derivative of d with respect to y. And then this one has to be equal to minus d over delta x. So if we actually try to, if we want to know if, whether a function is analytic, what we need to do is we evaluate this derivative. So for the function where it has u and v, so use the real part, v is the imaginary part. We evaluate this. If it satisfies both equations at the same time, then it is indeed analytic and we can proceed to perform some operations on it. So let's just try to, um, just to give you a gist of how this works. Um, there are actually different ways to express a complex function and this is what I will talk about now. So imagine that you have the function e to the power z and z is a complex variable. Well, this is a perfectly um, this is perfectly correct notation. We can represent it as this, but obviously we want it in the form u plus iv. So in order to express it like that, we need to try to, um, we need to input the value f of x plus i y into it. So if we do that here, we're going to get e to the x plus i y, which is going to be e to the x times e to the i y. And now if you notice, this is a real number for any value of x is going to be real and this is going to be the Euler identity which decomposes into cosine of y plus i sine of y and so basically this is the representation of this complex function in terms of u and v so you can see that the real part now is ex cosine of y and the imaginary part is going to be sin ex sine y so now if we proceed with the derivatives, we're going to have partial of u with respect to x, that's just going to be the same. Then the partial derivative of u with respect to y, that's going to be what? That's going to be minus e to the x sine y. Then for this one, we're going to have... And finally for this one, we're going to have e to the x cosine of y. So the Cauchy-Riemann equation tells us that if the cross derivatives in this case, if this and that are equal, and if this and that are equal, and this has to be negative. So if we make this negative, and that negative form is equal to this, then it, it is the function is indeed analytic. So in this case, is analytic. So that's how you would go about showing it. And this procedure of decomposing it into exponential functions to find an expression in terms of x and y is quite common. And we will continue to use it in the next video when we actually go into how to express functions like sine of z in terms of x and y and in this form. So that's what we will do in the next video.